When I shot this image on Whitby Pier, there was a great sunset, but it was still too early for the streetlights in the foreground to be turned on. So in this video, I'll explain how to turn on streetlights using a few basic tools in Affinity Photo. I'm going to start by adding a new empty pixel layer, which is where I'll create my new light source. I can do this using the new layer option in the Affinity Photo layer menu. Or I can click the Add New Pixel Layer icon to the bottom right of the Layers Studio panel. The way that I'm going to add the new light to the pixel layer is using the Paintbrush tool. But before I can paint, I need to select a suitable colour for the light. Now the easiest way to do this is by sampling another light in the scene if there is one. In this image, you can see there's a light on the pier in the background. If I magnify the area, I can use that to sample the colour. To take the sample, I'll double click on the colour swatch at the bottom of the tool's palette. This opens the colour chooser dialog. Now I can click by holding the sample tool down using my mouse. Then, while still holding down the mouse button, I can move the pointer over the light. When I release the mouse button, it samples the colour at that point. You can see this now appears in the dialog. Then, when I click on the picker, it sets the colour. Now if you don't have a light in the image that you can sample, you need to set the colour manually. You can do this by using the hue slider at the top of the dialog to set the colour component. After that, you can click on a point to control the brightness and the saturation. Although I've sampled the light in this image, I'm going to use a slightly lighter and less saturated colour. That's because the light that I'm turning on in this image is in the foreground, so I want to make it appear slightly brighter. Now let's position a magnified area on the street light so we can see what's happening. At the moment, you can see that my brush, opacity, flow and hardness are all set to 100%. When I move my brush over the light, you can see a preview of what will happen if I click once. Whilst this looks nice and bright, it also looks a little bit too hard around the edges. If I reduce the hardness to about 60%, it'll soften the edge to produce an effect more like a bright bulb. I'll then move my mouse into position and click once to paint on the layer. Now let's add a second layer to the image, and this time I'll use it to light the rest of the lamp. To create this effect, I'll soften the edges of the brush to about 30%. Now I can position my brush over the lamp and set the size. I'm going to use the square bracket keys on my keyboard to do this, and I want to make the brush slightly larger than the lamp. I can then click once to add the lighting effect, after that, I'll change the blend mode of the layer from normal to screen to produce a more realistic glow effect. Now whilst this improves the lighting, it's still not entirely realistic. That's because the light is covering the black metal strips holding the lamp bulb in place. What I need to do is create a mask to hide the light where the straps are. So let's turn off the two layers and click the background layer to work with that instead. There are different ways you can create a selection to produce a mask. I'm going to use the selection brush for this example. It's best to magnify the image and use a small brush size to work with. Don't worry if you select areas that you don't want to, you can switch to the negative mode to then remove them. If you have a problem using the selection brush, I've included a link to another of my videos in the YouTube description explaining how to get the best results. Now that I've made a selection, I can show the two layers again. I'll then add a new mask to the layer by clicking the Add Mask icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. If you're using Affinity Photo 2, it will give you a choice of masks. You want to use the Mask option, which is the same as the mask that you would have added in the first version of Affinity Photo. When you add the mask, you'll see that it's the reverse of what you want. To fix this, first clear your selection by pressing Command and D, or if you're using a Windows PC, that's Control and D. Then with the mask selected in the Layers panel, invert it by pressing Command and I, which is Control and I on a Windows PC. Now we can see the metal straps are hiding the light, but we can improve the effect still further. I'll do this by first changing the blend mode to screen. Then I'll drop the opacity of the layer to 90%. If this makes the bulb light on the lower layer look too bright, reduce the opacity of that layer as well. Another improvement that we can make is to produce some light spill along the metal straps near to the bulb. The way that I'll do this is by painting with white on the mask using a soft brush and a low opacity. Now you can see the light near the bulb is spilling over the black straps, which is what happens in reality when you take a photo like this. 
let's now look at the effect on the entire image by zooming out. The next step is to add a third empty pixel layer because we want to produce a wider glow around the light. I'll do this by using a brush with a 40% opacity and a hardness of about 20%. I'll then position my mouse and click once to add the effect. The effect looks okay, but I really don't like the way that it's covering up the dark lamppost. I could fix this using a mask like we did before, but there is an easier way by using blend ranges. I can access this control if I click the small cog icon in the layers panel when the layer is selected. There are two sets of blend ranges which relate to either the selected layer or the lower layers. In this image, I want to blend the layer based on the lower layers of the image, so I need to use the controls on the right. Watch what happens to the lamp if I pull down on the left side of the line. It allows us to see the black of the lamp hiding the bright areas of the top layer. I'm then going to move the white point over to the right to see the highlights around the lamp better. Now for a final step, which is to add some light to the ground around the base of the lamp. As before, we'll add a new empty pixel layer for this. I'll then create a large brush which has an opacity of about 40% and a hardness of about 20%. I can then position my mouse over the base of the lamp and click once to add the light. Don't worry that this doesn't look convincing at the moment. All we need to do is change the blend mode of the layer to overlay. After that, you can adjust the opacity of the different layers to achieve the effect you want. Now the bit that I probably skipped over a little bit too quickly was the blend ranges control. That's because I've already produced this video explaining it in detail. Go watch that next to learn how it works, but don't forget to subscribe first if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon for another video.